This episode was brought to you by Pentester Academy, the leader in online cybersecurity education. Join over 10,000 professionals from 90 countries to learn security online. Also brought to you by Hacker Arsenal, artillery for cyber warriors. Visit us on hackerarsenal.com to check out our latest attack defense gadgets. I'm Marley Oxenholm from Pentester Academy TV, and welcome to our show, Access Point, where we spotlight cybersecurity companies and give an inside look at the people and technology behind the latest advancements in the industry. Today, I'll be speaking with the company New Cipher. I'm sitting down right now with McLean Wilkinson, who is CEO of the company. Thank you for joining me today. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. I uh, got a lot of great questions here from our tech team, so you ready to get started? Absolutely. Let's do it. All right. Okay, so first question. Uh, can you talk about your startup's founding story, who founded it, and why did you come up with this idea? Sure. So my background is this weird blend of software engineering and finance. Okay. So I was working at Morgan Stanley out of undergrad on the investment banking side, covering tech and media and telcos. Mm -hmm. uh, decided to leave that, came out to Silicon Valley, met my co-founder, Michael Egrov, and we, this was about three or four years ago, right okay. around when Ethereum and all these new blockchain projects were getting announced, and that was kind of this inter interesting intersection for me of finance and engineering and technology and and um, how I first got into like cryptography and encryption through that sort of experimentation. Mm -hmm. um, we worked for a while um, doing a bunch of different experiments in the space, ended up building a project called ZeroDB, which okay. was an end-to-end -end encrypted database, which allowed you to query a database server without giving the encryption keys to the database server. So simple queries, things like searches, sorts, mm. and range queries. One of the interesting aspects of ZeroDB was this ability to allow other third parties to query your data or to share your data with mm -hmm. them. And right. We used this technology called proxy re-encryption to, to do that, um, and eventually decided that was actually the most interesting aspect of what we had built, and sort of pulled that out um, into a more general encryption layer, um, in, into new cipher, which we can apply to different distributed systems platforms. Nice. Okay. And tell me really quickly, just uh, what drove the need for a company like new cipher? Sure. So I think where proxy re-encryption and what we're doing has a lot of value over, say, just traditional public key encryption or some mm -hmm. of the other alternatives like mm -hmm. data tokenization or data masking is in scenarios where you have many-to-many -many sharing patterns. So okay. let's say if I'm using public key encryption, it's for, we're very good for what I would call one-to-one -one communication. So mm -hmm. if I need to share a message with you, I can just encrypt your public key, send it to you, decrypt your private key. It works perfectly right. fine. Right. But if I need to share that message with, let's say, dozens or hundreds or thousands of recipients, okay. uh, the traditional public key encryption doesn't scale very well. I have to encrypt n times for each person I send it to, mm -hmm. send it across the network a whole bunch. Um, work, yeah. So really, in, the, in these many-to-many -many data sharing patterns, which under the hood of a lot of the distributed systems that we work with, that's where proxy re-encryption adds a lot of uh, additional value. Ah, okay, nice. And uh, so now uh, I see that you were part of the YC Summer 2016 batch. I'm sure all of our viewers would want to know more about your interview with the YC partners. Can you talk about your experience there after you got in? Sure. So YC, we did YC last summer. It was a great experience. Um, definitely highly recommended. It. It's, it's sort of yeah. obviously trumped up uh, or built up quite a bit, and it, we got a lot of value out of it. Nice. Um, the interview is 10 minutes. Yeah. And that's it. And you, so you had to get your point across, get what you're doing, get the value of it across, mm -hmm. which is hard to do in 10 minutes. Yeah, um, particularly hard. for people who maybe don't have uh, a background in security or cryptography, mm -hmm. um, particularly point. when we're dealing with a very technical startup. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so you have this intense period where you're hoping that you can do a good job of pitching and convincing someone to, to fund you and, and, and sort of kickstart your company. Nice. Okay, and uh, so now I know that you were also a part of the uh, TechCrunch startup Battlefield this year. Can you talk about that experience? Yep, that was another very uh, intense and intimidating experience. You're getting up on stage and you know live streaming to I don't know how many thousand thousands of people, yep, um, yep. and it's again sort of a, a tricky thing because with us as a very deep, te deeply technical startup, mm -hmm. you know, the intersection of security and cryptography and distributed systems, we had to find a way uh, to still convey the value of what we're doing, but also right. make it approachable and, and understandable by just average people who don't have that background in security. So that was probably the hardest part for us was mm. how, do we, how do we make this understandable and, and, and approachable to mm. the average person in the audience? While still like not just dumbing it down so much that yep. we're sort of losing you know, any any differentiation or any value of what we're doing. Good point. Okay, and uh, now I'm curious, how are people solving the big data encryption problem today? In your experience? Sure. So uh, I think what big data being sort of one of the distributed systems that we support, the others being blockchain and DApps, but also potentially some IoT stuff we could do in the future. They all sort of share this what I would call this many-to-many -many data sharing pattern that okay. I touched on before. So let's say with Hadoop, you've got 
a, a cluster of, of Hadoop nodes, a thousand nodes or hundreds of nodes, yeah. or in Kafka where you're streaming data and it's being consumed by dozens or hundreds of, of subscribers to that data stream, um, that's for that many-to-many -many data sharing pattern. So tr figuring out how you can encrypt the data, but mm -hmm. either solving this tricky key distribution problem or somehow getting it um, getting it decryptable by the recipient is, mm -hmm. is a hard thing to do. So for the most part, um, I mean, you have like transparent data encryption for Hadoop, for example, um, which works okay for certain use cases, but okay. for some, it, it, it doesn't sort of, it's not as robust as what a lot of big enterprises would need. Right. So a lot of people will fall back to things like data tokenization or data masking, okay. uh, which is sort of like a weaker form of data protection. Yeah. Um, it's appropriate for, let's say, if you want to tokenize um, data that doesn't have an underlying pattern. So you could safely tokenize things like credit card numbers or social security numbers, but if you wanted to tokenize names or you know natural language that has some underlying pattern, it's oh. susceptible to certain types of attacks. Okay. And uh, now, what is disruptive about the technology that you're developing? Does this require a major uh, shift in the way organizations think about encryption today? Yeah, so I think what's interesting about proxy re-encryption is it it solves this many-to-many -many data sharing problem in a, in a very kind of elegant way. Mm -hmm. So instead of encrypting n times for dozens or hundreds of recipients that I need to share data to, whether they're right. individuals or devices or nodes in a cluster, instead I can encrypt data one time under the data owner's key. Okay. And then using proxy re-encryption, I can delegate and revoke access to pretty much arbitrarily as many recipients as I like. Ah. Um, and it's a comparatively very cheap operation. Um, so the, the interesting thing about proxy encryption is I can have data encrypted under one key pair. Mm -hmm. I can use proxy encryption to re-key or re-encrypt or transform it into being encrypted under a different set of keys. Wow. And the, the interesting piece there is you can do that re-encryption without any intermediate decryption in the middle. Wow. So it's ciphertext in, ciphertext out. This where the data, the storage layer where the data is, is kept, never sees the plain text data, uh -huh. and neither does the proxy that's doing the re-encryption. Nice. And you said you can revoke the access at any point as well. Yep. So we have this concept of re-encryption keys. So mm -hmm. if you're a data owner, and I, let's say I'm a data owner, I want to give you access to my data, I yep. can create a re-encryption key for you. And then if I need to revoke your access, I can just delete that re-encryption key. Nice. OK. And uh, now, wouldn't integrating your technology require rethinking and rebuilding existing platforms, or can it be integrated seamlessly and transparently? Yep. So we have a, a couple different options depending on a customer's requirements or their use okay. case. So one is if you're using existing systems like Hadoop or Kafka, we can install transparently on top of those systems. So we have partials nice. for the major Hadoop distributions, Cloudera, Hortonworks, AWS, cool. EMR. Um, for Kafka, we can install transparently as well and just give you end-to-end -end encryption. Um, we also have uh, basically a, a multi-tenant, multi-source data lake uh, mm -hmm. that we built entirely from the ground up. Um, so if you're nice. building like a, a shared resource for sharing data between different organizations, you can imagine sharing cyber threat data or diligence data okay. or data with a financial regulator. Um, if you're building something from scratch, mm -hmm. we would recommend doing that. Very nice. And uh, just out of curiosity, you mentioned your customers. Who do you see as being uh, some of your major or main customers? Like Sure. So we have, uh, it, it tends to cluster towards, obviously, people that have, one, a lot of data. Mm -hmm. So it makes sense for them to, use, to be using these distributed systems. And then, two, obviously, sensitive data. And also, some need to share that data between either different individuals, teams within the organization, or even cross-organization. So we see a lot in financial services is oh, a big okay. sector for us. Got um, it. They tend to obviously have a lot of sensitive data Makes and also sense. tend to have some of the more stringent security requirements. Uh, we do a little bit of work in the federal government as well around interagency nice. data sharing. Uh, one of the more recent additions uh, is we've we had blockchain support and support for decentralized applications. We see a lot of these newer uh, DApp projects, people, people building medical records applications on top of okay. the blockchain, or um, data exchanges, data marketplaces that are able to leverage new cipher in interesting ways as well. Wonderful. Okay. And uh, now, what are the company's plans for 2018? Sure. So one of the things, uh, one of the more exciting things we're working on right now is, is the blockchain support. And as part of that, we're actually creating a, a decentralized network of uh, re-encryption nodes. Mm -hmm. um, and that'll be incentivized using a, a token so that, okay. that sits on top of the blockchain. So we'll be having actually a token sale in early 2018. Nice. Um, and, and that's uh, a, a lot of work going into that. And I think one of the, the more exciting things on the docket for, for 2018. Very cool. OK. And lastly, uh, are there any last things you'd like to highlight about the product or the company as a whole? Uh, sure. So we are, I think, again, focused on these distributed systems. So the first 
platforms we supported with the big data platforms, more recently blockchain and dApps. Mm -hmm. But I think there's also a lot of potentially interesting things we can do um, in the longer longer term around mm -hmm. Internet of Things and IoT, where you have hundreds of devices that are streaming data, and you have to think about how you actually secure that. Right. Um, we recently closed a round of funding, and we're aggressively you know, hiring nice. and growing. So anyone hey. out there that's on the engineering side, or the community management side, uh, for our open source piece, or even the sales and, and marketing side, uh, we'd love to talk to you guys. And um, yeah. There you go. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much for uh, sitting down with me today and speaking with me. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. And that's all the time we have for today, so be sure to tune in next time for another episode of Access Point. Also, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook so you don't miss out on any of the latest cybersecurity news. This episode is brought to you by Pentester Academy, the leader in online cybersecurity education. Join over 10,000 professionals from 90 countries to learn security online. Also brought to you by Hacker Arsenal, artillery for cyber warriors. Visit us on HackerArsenal.com to check out our latest attack defense gadgets. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.